Crown Jewel 2023 was... I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say you should watch until the end of the video to understand what it was. Was it amazing? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it terrible? You're gonna understand soon. The night started with the kickoff show, of course, and Sami Zayn versus JD McDonough. My prediction was that JD McDonough is gonna win somehow and that will secure him a place in the Judgment Day. And my prediction was not true. Sami Zayn won, but JD McDonough, as I said in my predictions, it was shown how good he was by Sami Zayn. He has a cool skill set, he has a cool move set, he's good in the ring. Sami Zayn won, of course, and after the kickoff show, Sami Zayn did more things and I'm gonna talk about them later. But my prediction was not true. Sami Zayn won. After that, the opening match, Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And my prediction was that Seth Rollins is gonna retain. And my prediction was true. Seth Rollins retained, but it was a close one. Drew McIntyre was so close to winning. I was expecting some sort of interference, to be honest, by the Judgment Day or someone else. But there was no interference, it was a clean victory by Seth. And in the end, Damian Priest was about to cash in, but Sami Zayn attacked him from behind and he stopped the cash in. And also, he stole the briefcase from Damian Priest, which means that Sami Zayn really is a thorn in the thumb, in the ass, in the uh, Judgment Day's ass. Yes. And now he's gonna be a problem for Damian Priest to become a champion because his briefcase is in Sammy. So good story as well. And also, this is the first part of the Damian Priest downfall. After that, the fate of five way match Rhea Ripley, Zoe Stark, Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax, and Raquel Rodriguez fought for the world championship. And uh, as my prediction, Rhea Ripley won. This is the second part of the Damian Priest downfall. I hope they bring that up. Rhea is gonna be like, I'm the leader of the Judgment Day because I am the most dominant woman in my division. And Damian Priest is gonna be pissed off, but you're gonna understand why a little bit later. But as my prediction said, Rhea Ripley retained. So two out of three, baby. Two out of three. No one counts the kickoff show, like, come on. After that, Solo Sikoa versus John Cena. And as I said, Solo Sikoa is gonna win that one. Did I say that right? Solo Sikoa wins that one. He did. The last time we saw a 1v1 match with John Cena was at WrestleMania against Austin Theory. And it was a little bit of a sad match. It was a little bit of a five minute match where John Cena did nothing actually, but this time it was actually good and it was showing the story of the falling John Cena and how he's pass trying to pass the torch to Solo and I hope he did. I hope he did. I was a fan of Solo from the NXT days. Uh, I'm don't, I don't like him that much now while he's under Roman Reigns. But I hope that one day he's gonna turn on Roman and they're gonna start that huge feud and so on and so on. But yeah, solo won. Next up, a match for the United States Championship. Logan Paul versus Rey Mysterio is my prediction. I said that Logan Paul is gonna win and Logan Paul won. He didn't clean win. But he won, nonetheless. He used brass knuckles to hit Ray after a 619 and a jump from top row, whatever. But he won, he's the new United States champion. There is a lot of buzz around this. I hope he elevates that title. And whenever he became champion, I was like, isn't the next pay-per-view Survivor Series? And on Survivor Series, usually Raw goes against SmackDown. Does that mean we are gonna see Gunther versus Logan Paul? Which will be brutal. That will totally destroy Logan, I feel like. But I don't know. We should wait and see what's gonna happen with that US Championship, what's gonna happen with that Intercontinental Championship, and what's gonna happen with Logan, and also what's gonna happen with Rey Mysterio, because I'm curious 
was a development for him as well. After that, Io Sky versus Bianca Belair for the WWE Women's Championship. As I said, Io Sky retained, but I never expected her to retain that way. Few years ago, Kyrie Sane left WWE, and I was. And I was upset, man. I was upset because she was so good, but she was not utilized right. But And she was going back to Japan. And they made that video package for Kyrie Sane. But now she returned. She returned to help you, Sky. And that is great. She's looking better than ever. She helped you, Sky, to defeat Bianca Belair. And now you, Sky, is still the champ. You, Sky, retained. I don't know what's gonna happen with Bianca Belair. I guess we should wait until Friday to understand what's gonna happen. But yeah, Io Sky retained. It was actually a really entertaining match when Kairi Sane joined the whole thing. Yeah, it lasted five minutes, but who are you to judge? After that, Cody Rhodes versus Damian Priest. Cody Rhodes won as my prediction. And this is the third chapter of the Damian Priest falling so i can't wait for monday to see what's gonna happen unfortunately some judgment day drama is gonna happen but on the bright side cody is back on his story uh, honestly lately he's telling that his story is all about failing and getting back up and all of that stuff but we all know that wins are always a good part of the story no matter if the story is not actually winning the WWE Championship. So, yeah, I can't wait for Monday to see what Cody is gonna tell, what Damien is gonna tell, what internally is gonna cook in the Judgment Day and all of that stuff. By the way, Judgment Day tried to help Damien. So I feel like this is the fourth part of the Damien Priest fall because no one could help Damien. And actually, Jey Uso was a... Oh, was able to stop everyone from the Judgment Day to, to help Damien. Like, JD McDonough was out there. Dominic Mysterio was out there. Finn Balor was out there. Like, everyone tried except Rhea Ripley. And I feel like Damien is gonna bring that up tomorrow. We will see. Last but not least, the main event. Roman Reigns versus LA Knight for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. Should I say it? Should I say it? Of course. Roman Reigns won. Earlier today, my girlfriend asked me how the main event ended. And I was like, LA Knight won. And she was like, no way. And I was like, yeah, I mean, why do you even ask then? Like, at this point, I feel like if LA Knight was about to win, Triple H would come out and help Roman. I don't know. Even, I'm not gonna be surprised even if Vince McMahon comes out and helps Roman to retain his title. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Jim Yusu was out there, Solo Sico was out there to help Roman. Everyone was out there. And in the end, Spear, one, two, three, LA Knight down. It was a good match nonetheless. As I said in the previous video, Roman has the ability to make everyone look like a million bucks. I still remember his match against Logan Paul versus Riddle. They look like absolute stars. And now this is the case with LA Knight as well. I hope this defeat does not kill his momentum. I hope he goes back in the title picture sooner or later. But yeah, that's it for Crown Jewel. And if I should rate Crown Jewel 2000, 23 i would have given it 8.3 out of 10 it was a great show really entertaining i actually skipped in total like two minutes in the women's matches somewhere and i was actually pretty entertained if there is a match that you should watch from all the crown jewel i think it was the u.s championship match Rey mysterio versus logan paul Logan Paul made an actual beast move like he made some sort of a moon salt slam with Ray from the second rope it was actually looking beautiful even Wade Barrett was saying like in my entire career I know only three guys who can do that move and with Logan Paul doing it now it makes four so this is incredible I'm really curious to see what Logan Paul has in store but again thank you guys so much for watching 
and I'm gonna see you tomorrow for Collision because today was for Crown Jewel. Peace.